Roadrunner Rundown on Bakersfield.com and the CSUB Roadrunners Digital Network. Live videos in downtown Bakersfield, California. Welcome once again to Roadrunner Rundown, the official program, CSUB Roadrunner Athletics. Corey Costello with you. Thanks so much for joining us once again on the program as uh, we got a good show planned for you today. As always, we're going to be uh, talking a lot of basketball because it's a very important time of year as uh, the CSUB men's and women's basketball teams getting really close to the Western Athletic Conference Tournament. It is just, uh, oh, let's see, three weeks away-ish. Matter of fact, two weeks away, I guess, if uh, if you were if you were counting proper like and uh, so we're going to be speaking with uh, with Javante Maynard coming up of CSB Men's Basketball. He is the uh, WAC Player of the Week from College Sports Madness. We will chat with him about uh, the Roadrunners. Just really resurgence here in the second half of conference play. Bakersfield now sitting as the number two seed in the tournament with two conference games to go. Also, the Roadrunners playing one final game tonight at home, a non-conference game against Bristol University. It is senior night, and Javante Maynard being a redshirt senior. We'll chat with him about his time here at CSUB and, uh, and much, much more. So a lot to come uh, with Javante Mater. He will join us. And uh, CESUB women's basketball head coach Greg McCall joining us on the program as well. His Roadrunners right now in the second seed as well in the upcoming conference tournament. Trying to hold on to that. They've got two remaining home games. They'll be at home the next two weeks. The next two Saturdays, as a matter of fact, at 1 o'clock. Runners hosting Seattle this Saturday and then Utah Valley next Saturday. So a uh, very important uh, last couple of conference games for the men's and women's basketball team. So our guests will be talking about that coming up on the program today. As well, of course, we've got scores and highlights from what was a uh, crazy busy weekend all the way from uh, Bakersfield to to Kansas City. The Roadrunners were in action, so we'll chat. Uh, she will check in on those highlights and uh, get you those as well. And uh, of course, uh, much much more coming up on the program. So thanks so much for joining us today. And uh, well, we got to get to the highlights because what a weekend it was. What a Saturday specifically in basketball. We'll start with men's basketball. Runners closing out the home portion of their wax schedule in style Saturday night, hosting Missouri Kansas City. Uh, Rod Barnes chatting with his squad. Other side of things, Tareem Richardson for Kansas City. Second place battle on the whack. This one wouldn't disappoint. Second half was a gem. The runners opening the half on an 11-2 run after trailing by four at halftime. Ali Ahmed going to work early with the finish. He had 12 for CSUB. Then it's Ahmed with the offensive rebound out to Javante Maynard for the three. He had th 15 on the night, including four three-pointers. Runners lead for much of the half before UMKC takes the lead back with this uh, with back-to-back three-pointers. This one coming right here as well with seven and a half to play. Final five were a doozy, so pay attention. Tied at 52 with five minutes to play. First of several big plays. This one as Javante Maynard fouled, somehow finishes the play as uh, he will hit the free throw. Another look. Look at that shot. Maynard off balance, gets it up in the air and gets it in. Nice finish. And after a pair of UMKC free throws, it's a one-point CSUB lead. And then watch this. Maynard going to miss the three. Jalen Arrington with the range for the tip. And are you kidding me? Unreal. Watch this again. Arrington from the baseline shot. Watch his arm behind his head to pull in this tip in for the Roadrunners. A couple more free throws from the Ruse. Again, it's a one-point play. Great inbounds play here. Ahmed draws a triple, triple team. He finds Javante Manor again. He nails it. Runners by four with just over a minute and a half left. Kansas City, though, they can shoot, and they show it. Frank Williams to make it a one-point game on a three-pointer here from the left side, his third three of the game. Runners by one. Back to the post. Bakersfield is going to feed Kevin Mays, who had a very good game. Look at this big-time junk jump hook. Short line drive, CSUB leads by three. Following a timeout, Martez Harrison has scored a game-high 27, has three more in him, and a long three at that. Look at the range here from Harrison as he's going to knock down this three-pointer. He ties the game with under 30 seconds left. Runners don't call, call timeout. They elect for one final Rap. play. 12 seconds. Wrap off the screen. Wrap 10 seconds. Wrap 9 seconds. 7 seconds. Wrap top of the arc. Wrap feeds out to Arrington. Four seconds. Arrington driving. Arrington for the win. Yes! 0.3 seconds to go! Jalen Arrington with the step back jumper, the hero of the night, as uh, it allows for the one more miracle chance for UMKC with 0.3 left. Take a look again. Arrington dribbling over to his left. Step back. 18-footer, nails it for the Roadrunners, and then 
Kansas City going to try to throw it in. Not going to happen. And Bakersfield gets the victory as the runners take over second place as uh, Bakersfield. What a night for all, all sorts of players with big-time plays down the stretch. Four players in double figures. None other than No, no bigger than Arrington, 16 points, including the game-winning shot for CSUB as the runners sweep the weekend at home in conference play. And the runners, as I mentioned, now in second place trying to close out for that number two seed as here's head coach Rod Barnes. Well, it was a big shot. I mean, I thought, uh, you know, it was a really good play. The great thing about it, it was an abnormal play for him. He does a really good job of shooting mid-running shots. From the time he let it go, I, I was confident that it was going to go in. <laughs> So Coach Barnes confident, Arrington confident, runners confident as well. They win 64-62, 16 points from Jalen Arrington, 15 apiece from Javante Maynard and Kevin Mays as well. So Bakersfield takes over second place thanks to in part to uh, handling business on Thursday night as well. They beat Chicago State 64-51. to Upcoming for the Roadrunners, as we mentioned, tonight Bakersfield hosting a non-conference game against Bristol University, 7 o'clock at the Icardo Center. It is senior night, five senior will be honored pregame for the Roadrunners before uh, they play their final their final game of their careers in Bakersfield. And then the Roadrunners will be on the road at Seattle University on Saturday night. That game is going to be nationally televised once again. S- same network that televised uh, the Roadrunners home game here against Grand Canyon will televise this one as well, the American Sports Network. Uh, 7.30 to tip off time on Saturday. Check your local listings uh, for, uh, for clearance in your area. But the Roadrunners will be on television for the second time, national TV, second time this Saturday at Seattle. That's a big game as well as uh, Seattle. We look at the standings. Just one game behind the Roadrunners right there. So it's New Mexico State at uh, at 10-1. and one. They've wrapped up the regular season championship and the number one seed. Uh, CSUB at 7-5 and five there in second place. UMKC uh, one game back now in Seattle right there at 6-6. Six and six. So uh, on the heels of the Roadrunners and uh, that, those two teams will meet up on Saturday night as uh, Bakersfield has uh, doesn't have any days off really between here and the next, the next couple conference games. Very important for uh, for CSUB. On to women's basketball as uh, we take a look at the runners. They were on the road at Kansas City. Back and forth, uh, back and forth affair in this one. Early second half, the runners trailing, but not for long. Shaquita Smith with the three to give the Road Runners their first lead of the game. Then it's Badabe Zampari down low, two of her ten points in the game, and then uh, Tyana Outland. Why not? There's three of her twenty-two runners by a pair. UMKC though rolls off a six-zero run with jumpers, all of them from Aries Washington. She's gonna get them all. She's going to go inside. She's going to go outside. She's going to go mid-range. She hits them all. UMKC by five. 6.50 to play. Runners back up by two. And then it's uh, a four-point game. Zampari uh, with a beautiful feed from Erica Williams. Again, UMKC, though, going to go on a sport at spurt after two free throws from Washington. They're going to find her again in the paint. Ruse lead is four with less than three to play. 2.19 to go after a pair of free throws from Outlets. Williams again from the outside with the triple. Runners lead by one. Ruse take the lead on the other end. And then a free throws again. So CSB trails by less than a minute left. Who else but Outland keeps it herself. Tough finish. Runners by one. 34 seconds left. UMKC in control. Next possession. Taylor Leather is going to step out for the three with 13 seconds left. Ruse by two points. 13 left. The runners in Inbound, no hesitation. Uh, Erica Shannon finds Zampari in transition. Just like that, we're tied with six seconds to go. Now, if UMKC inbounds, the very worst for them is they're going to go to overtime. But trouble right here for the Ruse. They go for the long pass. It's a jump ball here at midcourt and broken up. Erica Williams comes up with it. Instead of shooting the three, she's going to go down to Tana Outland at the buzzer. You got it. Roadrunners going to win it with just two seconds to go. Timeout UMKC. The long pass now at the buzzer. This one not going to go well. Broken up by Bakersfield. They win the close one on the road, 78-76 in Kansas City. So how about that? Two uh, buzzer beaters for both basketball teams over Kansas City this week. The Road Roadrunners winning 78-76. Tana Allen, 22 points. She's closing in on 2,000 points on his career. Double-double, 10 points and 10 rebounds as well for Bonabay Zompari in the win. Runners also handling business in Chicago the Thursday before. They sweep their first conference uh, sweep of a road trip this season as they win 87-53 over Chicago State. Now the runners set to close their next two games uh, of conference play at home as they're going to host uh, Seattle uh, Saturday at 1 o'clock at the Icardo Center and then Utah Valley at CSUB Saturday, March the 7th, 1 p.m. And that's going to be senior night as well for the women's basketball team. Some seniors to honor, including uh, Tana Outland 
the runner's all-time leading scorer. That'll be uh, Saturday, March 7th at 1 o'clock. So two games in two weeks as we look at the standings. New Mexico State has uh, has wrapped up. The, well, they haven't wrapped it up yet. They could. If they if they lose the next couple and the runners win the next couple, we could get us into a fancy tie-break situation. So uh, we'll have to see. But New Mexico, New Mexico State only has one loss this year, and that is to the Roadrunners in conference play. CA should be at 9-3, and three, so it looks like one win will lock them up that number two seed at least. Uh, for the upcoming conference tournament in a couple weeks in Las Vegas. But uh, there you go. Uh, runners, very important right now in the standings, and uh, they've got uh, they, they've still got a little bit of work to do the next couple of weeks to secure that number two spot. Let's go to baseball real quick. Runners were at home this weekend, and you caught some of the action here on Bakersfield.com on Friday. Runners sweeping the doubleheader pretty much uh, fairly easily, 11-3 over Northern Kentucky in the first game. Nightcap saw Bakersfield uh, winning in the second game as well, 10-2. Two, uh, two, three as in that one. And then you go on to Saturday's game. Not so good for the runners. Northern Kentucky going to make it tough on Bakersfield. They get the win 8-2. to two. And then CSUB having a comeback on Sunday, but they got her done. They started slow. They found their bats. They win it 11-5 over the North. So they take three out of the four games on the series. Here's what's happening for baseball coming up tonight. They're at Cal Poly at 6 p.m. Then they go to the Arizona State Tournament. This weekend they'll face Arizona State Gonzaga and Purdue in the tournament there in Tempe. So uh, still very tough tests for the runners here in the non-conference portion of their schedule. And on to CSUB softball, they got to play a uh, brief series at home on Saturday. Roadrunners picking up a 2-0 victory over Pacific in the first game. Second game wouldn't go so well. Bats go quiet. Runners silenced 8-0 uh, to Pacific. So they get the weekend split. And here's what's coming up for CSUB softball. Back on the road they go to the Loyal Marymount slash Cal State Northridge Tournament. They'll play Sacramento State, Loyola Marymount, and Cal State Northridge this weekend in Los Angeles. So there you go. What a weekend for the Roadrunners. Matter of fact, it was homecoming week. Bakersfield on campus uh, goes uh, goes eight and two overall. So uh, not too uh, not too shabby for the uh, for the Roadrunners as a program. And uh, again, big wins for the basketball teams. That's what we're going to talk about when we come back next. Javante Maynard will join us. It's senior night tonight at the Carter Center. We'll talk to him about that and uh, much much more as the uh, the senior closes out a, a brilliant career here with the runners. We'll talk about that next. Stick around. It's Roadrunner Rundown. Welcome, everyone. Nissan of Bakersfield has everything for the perfect car buying experience. Like our beautiful showroom, full of the most popular Nissan models for you to explore. And our fully stocked parts and service department from everything from genuine Nissan accessories to factory trained service technicians to keep your car running its best. Plus, our massive inventory of new and pre-owned vehicles means you're guaranteed to find the right one for you. Nissan of Bakersfield is where you should buy your next car. One thing about living in Kern County is all the great schools. And no matter what school you go to, there's still one thing. One thing! One thing! We can all agree on. Kern Schools is the number one financial institution in all of Kern County. Take advantage of our auto rates as low as 1.99 APR with no payments up to 90 days. Kern Schools, the biggest little credit union in town. Kern Business Journal contains news and information from local business leaders and organizations. Topics include agriculture, health and medical, energy, transportation, and more. Visit kernbusinessjournal.com to find out how to subscribe or where to pick up a free copy. To inquire about advertising in the bi-monthly business journal, call 395-7586. Find us online on Facebook and Twitter, as well as on kernbusinessjournal.com. Save 50 to 90% with the Bakersfield Californians Daily Deal featured on bakersfield.com. A daily deal is offered each weekday on services from local restaurants, dry cleaners, health and beauty services, retail shops, and local activities for the entire family. The daily deal is 100% local. Find these amazing deals only at dailydeal.bakersfield.com. to excellence in the classroom and strive to achieve our potential. We compete on the field with integrity, on the court with respect, and in the pool with distinction. 
We are strong leaders in our community and gain values from our biggest fans. We continue the legacy of commitment to our universities, to our coaches, to our teammates, and most importantly to you. We learn, we compete, we inspire. We are the Western Athletic Conference. In a fertile valley, a growing university with record enrollment and graduates serving the needs of a thriving community, a tradition of athletic excellence. Now a part of the Western Athletic Conference, CSU Bakersfield. Welcome back to Roadrunner Rundown. As we continue on the program, uh, still to come on the show, we're going to talk some women's basketball. Greg McCall, our head coach, will join us as a CSUB with two big home games coming up in the next couple of weeks as uh, conference play sort of winds down and the Western Athletic Conference Tournament coming up March uh, 11th through the 14th at the Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. You can still get tickets. Uh, you, can go to, you can go to our website, GoRunners.com, and uh, get your ticket packages. You can call us as well at 654-BLUE and uh, get, your, uh, get your tickets. But obviously it looks like both Roadrunners teams – are going to be right up near the top of the conference standings. Going to have really good seeds in this tournament, so we encourage you to come on out to the Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. It's a lot of fun, and uh, there's also some travel specials available, uh, room, special room rates as well at the Orleans Arena. So make sure you join us for that. Uh, don't want to miss that coming up uh, March 11th or the 14th in Las Vegas. Joined now by uh, the Roadrunners' uh, se redshirt senior guard, Javante Manor. He was College Sports Madness's WAC Player of the Week this past uh, weekend. Uh, good to see you again, man. How you doing? I'm good. Feeling great right now. I was gonna say yeah. you got to be feeling pretty good right now because yeah. uh, first things first. Congrats on the weekend. You guys won them both. Exciting game against Kansas City. You mm -hmm. know what was that like? Yeah, you had some great plays down the stretch. Seems like everyone on the floor. We went through the highlights. You, yeah. Kevin Mays, Jalen Arrington, of course, Brent Rapp. I mean, Ali. Mm -hmm. Everybody had like their moment in the final five minutes of that one. Oh yeah, I, I'm I'm thankful for Jalen shot because if we didn't win that game, I probably wouldn't have got that nom nomination. Yeah. Black Player of the Week. Uh, Brent, he controls the ball well. Like, I'm, I'm really impressed with him this year. He really keep us together in the late minutes of the game. Uh, Kevin, he's strong, powerful down there. He's going to get us some rebounds. And he, he has – like, when he's in the game playing smart, we always get a win. I tell him that every game. <laughs> Ali, he's always our, our finisher toward, at the end of the game. He always gives us, like, two or three buckets in a row. Well, even not even buckets, but even like he had a couple assists on your three pointers. Oh yeah. Even that one late, he gets he draws off the inbound, he draws the triple, uh -huh. and he and he kicks it out to you, and you hit the three. I mean, that's something we've been kind of waiting for all year, but that's a pretty good combination when that starts to work. Oh yeah, we practice it. You, you know, Ali's been killing all year, so all the attention is on him now. So it's really easy for me because I know in like previous years, like guys will not leave me; they'll face guard me the whole time. But since Ali is like so dominant down there, they they forget about me now. So. <laughs> That's, that's a plus on my side. I'm not going to forget for long. You keep doing this. <laughs> but uh, after all the close losses over the last few seasons, I mean, what's it been like lately to close out these games and, and get victories? Uh, it feels good, especially going in towards the uh, tournament. You want to have that momentum and that confidence that, you, that you've been searching for all year. So it's been, it's been, it's been very, a very good blessing that we win these games. Was it, was it tough to stay encouraged and not be discouraged after those close losses earlier this season? I mean, there was a couple in conference play. There was a lot of non-conference games that were close. I mean, was it, was it tough to, to not be discouraged, or were you just kind of keep eyes to the future? Uh, well, we always look forward to the, the conference. That's what our main focus was. So the conference really, really saved us this year. We were like, well, the conference tournament is what really matters, and getting to the NCAA tournament is, is our, our main objective this year. So losing those games early, they hurt, but we still had hope for the future. Did it help knowing what you knew from last year in the conference tournament and how well you guys sort of played uh, you know, in, in, your, in your preliminary round victory, in mm -hmm. your close loss in the semis to New Mexico State? So do you kind of know and the guys that returned kind of knew – you know, we just need to make sure we're playing together at the right time going into the conference tournament. Oh, yeah. You always want to play together. Um, right now our shots are falling, which we didn't fall in, in the beginning of the season. So that's that's a huge plus for us. Our, our main thing is to keep up our defense so the other team don't score, which is basically what basketball is. <laughs> yeah. So, so, yeah, right now we're, we're rolling. Our guys are confident. More guys are in the gym now shooting. So I feel like guys feel like we have a chance to go, go win the uh, tournament. You, you you were here last season when you guys were fighting sort of at the lower levels of the of the WAC standings. This season you're near the top. What's the change been like, and you know how does it feel different this year? Um, the change is, is 
it feels better because last year we had I think I feel like we had a, a more talented team last year, and by us losing those games were disappointing because we were so high in the beginning, and then I think that we we dropped so low at the end that guys couldn't couldn't get back together, but this year we started off rough road, went to Cal, won that game, and it really sparked some interest in guys' heads like yeah we can be a good team, so going into this tournament I feel like guys know that it's, the sky's the limit right now. I was going to say, and you bring up the Cal game, and really since the Cal game, I don't think you guys have lost more than you know maybe two in a row at one point. Mm -hmm. uh, that was it. I mean, so really, was that kind of the turning point for the team a little bit? After you beat Cal, you're like, wow, we can, we know, we can do some stuff. Yeah, because we found our identity. Uh, we knew that we can lock up a, a Pac-12 team on defense. So we're like, oh, our defense is good. So if we start making shots, nobody can stop us. In which we have been making shots, but I feel like our defense can be a little bit better. So going into this tournament, we keep making those shots and playing some good defense, then it'd be it'd be a good show. Well, Coach Barnes has said all year to the media that he believes in this team, he likes the way it's built. Has that kind of been passed on to you guys as well from him and the coaching staff that, hey, you know, we, we know you guys can do this? Oh, yeah, because he always uh, compares us to his Ole Miss team that went to the, uh, I think, the Sweet, Sweet 16. 16, yeah. Yeah, and we, we watched the film on those guys, and then they looked identical to us. <laughs> he had a guy who was just like Kevin Mays. He had a point guard like Brent Rapp. He had shooters like me, Cortez, and uh, guards like uh, Jalen and uh, Deshaun. So yeah, we we identified to that team uh, very well. So we all we all have faith that we can we can make that run. You need to bring up a couple other guards that have been playing here well lately. Uh, you know, Cortez Connors has been. It's been kind of crazy to see what pieces sort of show up each game mm -hmm. because lately, it, it, early in the year, it was basically Ali, maybe one more supporting member. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, like last game, four guys in double digits. Yep. Two games ago, Cortez has a career high. Mm -hmm. uh, this past game, Jalen has 16 after being quiet the game before. Mm -hmm. You're getting those other pieces, those other guys to step up. I mean, that's that's a good combination right now. I mean, that's deadly because now it's hard to scout. Now, yeah. now the scout report is deeper now. Now the guys have more to read and study on. Besides before, you only had to study on probably like two or three guys. Mm -hmm. Now when the, now when a team coming in, you got shooter, shooter, and then you got a post up guy coming in, and you got defenders on the court. And it's hard, it's hard to scout against that and make the right substitutions. Yeah, and, and you know, let's talk about your weekend. Uh, you average over 18 points a game, shot over 50 percent from the field, 54 from the three, near career high, 21 against Chicago State. It was a season high. Was it one of those weekends where the basket just looked this big around when you were shooting the ball? I mean, you just figured it was going to go in. Well, I look, I looked at the standings, and I was like. We get second place, then we can meet New Mexico State in the championship. Yeah, and I'm like, it's nothing better than just playing as hard as you can for one game, for a, for a trophy. Yeah, then just playing just a regular season game for a spot on the uh, charts. So I'm like, if we can lock down this second place spot, then they can make my season extend longer than what it is. Yeah. So that was my main objective: is to play my best and try to put my team in the best position to win. Do you have those moments in basketball? I know, like in other sports. With a, in baseball, but guys on a hitting streak, he's saying, you know, the ball looks as big as a basketball when he swings. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's uh, guys in uh, guys in football wideouts talk about, you know, the passes seem to come to them in slow motion, and yeah. they just make catches. And uh, you even hear soccer guys talking about the, you know, looks as big as a two car garage when they're shooting. Sometimes does that happen in basketball when you're just in that zone where everything just looks a little easier? Oh yeah, because I, I come to shoot in the gym every day, so. When I look at the the rim when I'm about to shoot, I'm like, oh, this is a shot I shoot like 300 times a yeah. day. You know what I'm saying? So when I when I catch the ball, it's like, oh, this is practice shot, <laughs> practice shot. So it feels good, especially at home. Yeah. When you, when you look at the basket, it's like, oh, this is this is good. Yeah, and and, and you had some struggles early this season, mm -hmm. uh, but in WAC games this year, you're shooting 47 percent from the field, 47 percent from three point range, which by the way is second in the conference. Um, what did you have to do? What was the road like getting back from? You know, at one point I think you were shooting like 20 some odd percent from the outside. Mm -hmm. So what was the road back like? Was it just shooting a lot of shots? Uh, you know, what what'd you kind of have to do to get it turned around? Uh, it was mental, because. Uh, the start of the season, I didn't like how it went as far as us losing those close games. So I was like, and plus we have a young team. Mm -hmm. So me, I was really making sure my guys were okay because you know how it is when you have a new team. You can plummet and never rise up because these guys don't know the ins and outs of winning and losing. So coming into conference, I was like, this is what really matters. In the beginning, it mattered as far as record-wise, but I was like, coming into conference, I should really step it up if I really want to have a great, great senior year moving past the tournament yeah and uh, and so far like I mentioned uh, you know 40 uh, 47 percent 45 and 95 in the field 36 of uh, 76 for 47 percent 
from uh, from the outside as well, averaging 11 and a half points a game in conference games as well. See, so right up there, uh, second on the team right now, and in the top uh, 20 in scoring in the conference. The team as well. I mean, the team mm-hmm. shooting 45 percent in conference games and 37 uh, percent from the three in conference games. Uh, obviously, that uh, you, know, you said earlier, the team, the, the shots are, are falling for this team right now. Mm-hmm. What uh, you know? What what has been the difference? Did that entire switch kind of flip on after the first couple conference games as well for you guys? Yeah, because like I said, like if you preach conference wins and you preach conference trophy and regular season championship, guys guys going to believe that even even if you're you're losing in the beginning, they still feel like they have hope. So once you get get into the conference season and going to the tournament, that's when guys start start playing a little bit harder, have a little bit focus. They probably go home and sleep better because they're trying to wake <laughs> up with a lot of energy. So, yeah. I, I know I know guys are prepare, preparing themselves mentally to try to take take the tournament. Absolutely, uh, we're gonna we're gonna take a break here. You guys stick around for one more segment. Want to talk about uh, your final home game tonight? Surprise uh, that it's mm-hmm. here already. We'll talk about that yep. and of course a few other things uh, coming up uh, for the Roadrunners in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we'll be right back, folks, with Javante Maynard. This is Roadrunner Rundown. This year, Kern Schools is celebrating its 75th anniversary. And one thing about living in Kern County is all the great schools. North High, open 1953. West High, 1965. Highland, 1970. Stockdale, 1991. And no matter what school is yours, we all agree, Kern Schools is the number one financial institution in all Kern County. Kern Schools, now open to all Kern County residents. I'm not going to ask him about funguses. Fungi. Honey, have you called Gun Knox about fixing that toilet upstairs? What? You know, I saw a plumbing episode on the Fix It channel. Yeah, I can fix it. You could try it yourself, or you could just call Gun Lax and save your marriage. Hey, honey, I think I did it! Oh! Gun Lax. Gun Lax. 327-3052. That wasn't so bad. We've never done marketing. It seems to be a little intimidating. You don't know what's available. You think you're going to sell your first child or it's going to be really expensive to do. But Heather really described everything in a way that we knew exactly what we were doing. There was nothing, no questions about it. She was very clear. Um, I really, really enjoyed that, that Heather took her time to get to know us as a family, get to know our business. From, any, from anyone that I do meet, I like to you know, get to know them. We knew exactly what we were getting into, but really the results of it was far more than we ever expected. Um, I think it brought us to the forefront of most people's mind. So they heard our name and then all of the videos and pictures, the Bakers for Life put a face to the name and they were able to connect that and know what our product was, but also know us as a family. Because of the Baker for California and because of Heather, generated so much buzz about our restaurant that we couldn't have done it alone. It all comes down to this. 14 teams battle their way through the bracket for a chance to punch their ticket to the big dance. Be a part of the madness in Las Vegas, March 11th to 14th. Go all in and witness who goes home a champion at Orleans Arena. The 2015 WAC Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament. Tickets on sale now at orleansarena.com. The Roadrunner Scholarship Fund creates educational opportunities for over 300 student athletes at CSUB. By becoming a member and donating to the Roadrunner Scholarship Fund, you're not only helping the Roadrunners fund the scholarship needs of our teams, you're investing in the future. The Roadrunner Scholarship Fund isn't just developing student athletes. We're developing tomorrow's leaders from lessons learned during competition. For more information, log on to GoRunners.com slash donate and become a member of the Roadrunner Scholarship Fund.
Welcome back to Roadrunner Rundown. Still to come on the program, Greg McCall, our women's basketball head coach, will join us. We'll uh, chat, with him, chat with him about two upcoming home games for the uh, women's basketball team as they try to seal up. And yeah, still got an outside shot at the at the conference championship, but uh, try to at least seal up the number two seed uh, for the Roadrunners uh, in the conference tournament coming up uh, March 11th through the uh, 14th at the Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. Uh, still uh, joined here in studio by Javante Maynard, redshirt senior guard for the Roadrunners. And uh, I hate I hate to remind you, but you're going to have to play your final home game tonight at the Icardo Center. You've been around uh, here for four years, played for three, shot a lot of baskets in that gym. Uh, what will the emotions kind of be like at home tonight? Uh, it'll be some high emotions, especially uh, playing my last my last home game in college basketball. Uh, man, I'm, in high school, always always dreamed of getting to this point where you graduate from college and also be able to just go on and continue your life, especially with a resume that you play college basketball. So it's, I'm happy I'm happy for tonight because I got to this point, but it's, it's a sad moment because it's almost over. Yeah, and is it one of those things that, I mean, you, you really can't believe that it's, you know, finally ended. I mean, you're yeah. finally at this point. Yeah, because, like, last year, looking at those guys I've been with for a, a while, uh, IG and uh, Steph Johnson, all those guys I've been with around for a long time, it was it was it was hard looking at that like oh this is gonna be me next year yeah. but it just it just seems like it goes by fast I didn't want to believe it when they <laughs> when they were going through it they're like oh man's gonna come up quick so I was like nah it's not <laughs> but now it's here yeah uh, and you've been around I mean you've been around Coach Barnes for five years now including his final season at Georgia State which was your first season there your final season as well how how big a part of your life has Coach Barnes the Barnes family been you know over the last you know five years and 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 then some. Uh, they've been a big part. Uh, uh, my whole college career, I've been around them, the family and his sons and everybody. Just I've been around their family, so I built a bond with them. Uh, I've been to church with them a couple of times. Uh, been in their house, eat dinner, stuff like that. So they were like basically my family out here from home. So they they comforted me and kept me on the right path through this whole time. And I know the entire you know this entire season. I know even we brought it up earlier when you kind of struggled a little bit from the field. Mm -hmm. uh, you know we we knew Coach Barnes still still believed in you. He still yeah. knew you could get it done. How did he encourage you and kind of push you this season to improve when you you know started out a little slow? Uh, he he always stayed behind me. He made he made sure that I was okay. He, he talked to me, uh, made sure things were going well with me uh, off the court things. Made sure that I was right. Uh, he knew it was, it was mental. He knew how it is in your senior year, the, <laughs> the pressure on you. So he uh, he basically was like, just keep working, just keep shooting shots, and it'll it'll fall for you. Uh, when you decided to leave Georgia uh, uh, four years ago, you, you, your home state, you, what, you you grew up there, you played high school ball there, you started your college career there, mm -hmm. decided to come out to California. I know you had to tell your folks, I want to go to California. So uh, was it a little bit easier because you knew you were going to come out and uh, and play for Coach Barnes and have some familiarity? Yeah, well, it was easier because at Georgia State, I started I started a few games, uh, played some minutes, averaged a few points. So I had faith that when I came out here, I'd be okay as far as uh, my career my career going. But yeah, I talked to my mom. She was like, "Yeah, that's that's okay. Yeah, I believe you, you should go out there." So it was all an easy process for me. Yeah, and uh, let's talk present day uh, non-conference game tonight. You're coming off of a pair of big conference wins, big one on Saturday night. Is it tough to kind of shift gears and come to a, a non-conference game uh, after something like Saturday, or is it you know, just business as usual? Um, I just I just feel I just enjoy it. That's it. I I enjoy playing. So these games, I go into them just excited to play. I try to lead the business part out and just go out on the court and just just play basketball. I think this one is timed interesting because yeah. it is senior night, so there is a lot of reason for a lot of guys to go out there, non-conference or not, uh -huh. to go out there and and you know put on a show and go out there and play hard because mm -hmm. it's their last game. And so I mean, there's five seniors, so obviously you guys want to go out on a on a high note. Mm -hmm. uh, talk real quick about some of the other guys. Uh, you know, you've got Craig Jones, we've got uh, Abdi, uh, Tyrell Corbin. And uh, and my uh, fifth one is uh, slipping out of my head right now. The, D. Wallace. Uh, D. Wallace. So yeah. There you go. Uh, and guys, a couple of those guys. Craig's been around the program pretty much as long as you have, if not yeah. longer. Uh, D. Wallace has been around the last three years. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, t just talk about that. This senior class, and obviously the bonds kind of been created with these guys. Uh, we have a we have a great bond. Uh, I know Craig Craig Abdi, they're roommates, so they have a better bond than I have with both of them combined. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we we all talk. We're all cool. Um, it's going to be exciting to play this last game with him, especially Tyrell Corbin. Uh, he came last year, 
a great great guy. He can he can really play. He can I think he can play on the next level because mm-hmm. he has some skills that he hasn't really shown everybody yet. <laughs> so yeah. I, I enjoy those guys. Yeah, and uh, and you know you had a guy around been around the program a few years like D Wallace. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, at every practice uh, on the road, played sparingly here and there, but mm-hmm. you know obviously uh, a, a guy who's put in you know he's put in the work too. I mean, he yeah. hasn't played as much, but he's put in the time and and, and just a big part of the program. Yeah, I congratulate D because he does everything every everybody do. We lift weights uh, in the uh, preseason. He's running thirty threes on the track and all mm-hmm. that. So. In practice, when he when he gets it, we all know what's going in because he has that long arc in the yeah. air. So tonight, I, I feel like he should he should be a, a guy that everybody's cheering for because he's gonna he's gonna make some shots. Yeah, for sure. I'm thinking this is definitely one where he'll see some time and uh, and yeah, we've seen actually when they the, the name was different but when we played this program two years ago, mm-hmm. D had a career night. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so let's hope for the same uh, here as well. So non conference game tonight, big game at Seattle on Saturday as you get back into conference play. National TV again on American Sports Network. Do, do, and you, I guess you brought up earlier, but the, the, does the team look at the standings and think about the importance of these games with the conference tournament right around the corner? Oh yeah, uh, we're we're looking close at the standings because we know if we get that one game against the Mexico State in championship, we can we can possibly win that game. It just it just takes um, just a little bit of hard work these last two games to to finish out strong. What makes them? I mean, I, I see it, and, and a lot of fans see it, and coaches see it. But from a player's perspective, what has made New Mexico State? I mean, so tough to to to, to beat. Uh, they have a tradition there, so when guys come there, they're they're already expecting NCAA tournament. So they, it's kind of disrespect because they're probably like looking past us, like yeah, yeah we are we're a powerhouse. But that's that's all it is. Their confidence, and their tradition, and their in their ways of their ideals of what they expect on in the postseason. And they got dudes that are like seven and a half feet tall. I mean, yeah, you like can't. you can't you can't get those. You just can't get those just off of just creating a program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just you just can't find those guys on the street every day. Uh, mm-hmm. Back to Seattle. You played them once already. Got an overtime win here at home. What makes Seattle a, a tough team to to play? Obviously, they got some talent. Yeah, they have a real they have a good uh, guard, uh, Yuma Pig. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have a few guys on the side of him that can shoot the ball also. Um, basically, they just all, offense oriented team. They're really good on offense. So. Your defense has to be better than their offense, and that's, and that's the key to winning. Yeah, and, and your defense uh, has been good this year. Is it? T- I know Coach Barnes always preaches defense. Defense mm-hmm. isn't as fun as offense is, so oh, yeah. uh, how do you stay, I guess, engaged in defense when it's sometimes not as fun as shooting the basketball? Like, my philosophy is, like, if I score a basket, I don't want you to score a basket because now <laughs> – my basket doesn't mean anything. Like, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like you're going to hush my crowd or your crowd's going to be start cheering again. So I want to have the advantage the whole time while I'm playing you. So that's that's my drive on defense. Yeah, you're right. You know, you bring that up. You're absolutely right because there's nothing better than, you know, there's nothing really worse, I guess, than you hit a three, crowd goes crazy. 14 seconds later, the guys on the board, they hit a three and it's just like, oh, okay, well, that, now we're even. It just wipe, wipes it right off the board. Uh, yeah. You're right. So that's definitely a good a good motivator. Uh, been here, as we said, for four years, played for three. What's your time been like in Bakersfield? I mean, four years of your life uh, in, in this town. What's the mm-hmm. time been like? Uh, it's, it's been a laid-back town. Uh, I enjoy the people here. Everybody's friendly. Uh, different, it's a culture shock because coming <laughs> from the south to California, you, you see different people. And also the food's different out here. So it was, it was an adjustment also on that part. Uh, the weather's nice. It's always sunny. <laughs> well, lately it's been raining a lot, but yeah. it's always sunny here. Uh, been in L.A. Places it's places that I didn't dream of when I was a kid growing up in St. Petersburg, Florida. Yeah. I didn't dream about coming out here. So it was it was it was I enjoyed it the whole time. Do you uh do you find yourself now like since you've been in Bakersfield and in California for four years like now becoming a little more Californian like some of that stuff from the South sort of sort of fades away and you find yourself being a little more Californian than you thought you ever would be. Uh I don't know if I changed to being Californian, <laughs> but uh I, I still have some of those those I, those things that Californians do that I picked <laughs> up a little bit. So <laughs> nice. So I have, I have a combination of South and yeah, West. there you go. What uh, your best? Uh, you know, looking back over the last uh, you know four years here and your last three years on the court. You know, what's kind of been the best moment from your time at uh, at CSUB? Um, I want to say that that Cal win, that Cal win. It was it was exciting because coming like playing every every year you play against these Pac-12 teams, you were close. Yeah. Last year we were close. Um, so winning that game was like. Like yeah, like this is this is what college is about. 
upsets and yeah. playing close games and exciting games. Well, and and the weird thing is like and, and yeah, you're right. We've been to so many close Pac-12 games. I mean, that's one of those things though because so close for so long. And and I think and and, and maybe at the end of the season and maybe once in a while when I look back on it, the magnitude will hit me. But you mm-hmm. know, it just kind of it just it just it, when it happened, you really didn't know how to react because you're like. Yeah. And and it's and it's not like we came from behind. We kind of whooped them for, yeah. for the entire game, and so yeah. you're just kind of thinking, "Wow, did that just really happen?" Like yeah. you just really know how to like you really didn't know how to feel. Yeah, like I wanted to just like celebrate on the court, <laughs> but we were up the whole game, and it yeah. wasn't like an exciting finish. So it was like, <laughs> right. it was like let's just celebrate in the locker room, yeah. and, and go home. Yeah, and it was it was weird because like usually like when you play a game, you stayed at night, but we played them and, right. and just drove back here. We hopped so, on the bus, yeah, yeah, so. Waking up that morning, it was like, yeah, we just we just beat Cal last night. Yeah. I think it hit me, and I and I brought this up. It hit me because we right we were on the bus all night, and mm-hmm. I was I was sick, and so you guys come on the yeah. bus like you know fist bumping <laughs> me, and I'm just like, I mean, I was a zombie. <laughs> That's the worst part about it is I you know it is so heavily uh, cold medicined up on that deal. Yeah. Um, but I think when we kind of you know we get off the get off the highway, and it's like two thirty in the morning. Yeah. We get off the highway, and you start you just kind of see the lights of Bakersfield, and then I think that's when it hit me. I was like, yeah. you know. Oh my God! We just beat Cal. Yeah. <laughs> like it, just, it took like four hours on a bus yeah. in the middle of the night to sort of sink in, and yeah. and yeah, that was a, a great moment for sure. Uh, real quick, uh, y- y- your academic stuff, biology major, minor in chemistry, no easy task. How's mm-hmm. that coming along? Are you uh, ready to graduate in June? Yeah, it's coming along well. It seemed like when you get to the door, now all your classmates start recognizing you. Like, hey man, you're in my class. Like, <laughs> <laughs> before, like walking around campus, like nobody would approach me like that. So. It's exciting, like people recognizing me, like off campus and on campus. Yeah, and they know that I play basketball, so they're amazed at that. So, it's, it's exciting. Yeah, and uh, what are the kind of your next plans for you? I mean, looking at possible medical stuff with your degrees, things like that. Yeah, uh, probably going to chiropractor school. Uh, I want to continue playing basketball because mm. if you look at it any way you want, like basketball, if you play it for a long time, you're going to miss it. Yeah. So it's going to be hard for me to stop playing. So I think I'm going to play probably a few more years and. To go into a profession. Well, but if you're going to have uh, degrees in biology and, and a minor in chemistry uh, in your back pocket, you can play yeah. professional basketball and always have something to fall back on. So yeah. that's, a, <clears throat> that's a life lesson, kids. Uh, there, there you go. <laughs> so, uh, well, man, congratulations on a phenomenal career. You've been fun to watch the last uh, the last three years. And uh, one more home game tonight at the Icardo Center. Mm-hmm. So let's go out with a bang. And, uh, again, a lot, a lot of basketball still to go, though, yep. in the conference side of things. So uh, we'll – uh, we, you know, definitely good luck down the stretch, and uh, we'll be following very closely. All right, thank you. All right, Javante Mayner here on Roadrunner Rundown. Runners tonight, 7 o'clock, Bristol University at the Icardo Center. Come out and see. Uh, i got five seniors, including Javante and company. Uh, Craig Jones been here for five years as well. So uh, see those guys off in a uh, in big fashion tonight at 7 o'clock. We're going to step away and take a break. Women's basketball, they are at home the next two weekends as they round out conference play. Greg McCall joins us. They had a couple big wins this past week. We'll talk to him about all that great stuff. When we get back, it's Roadrunner Rundown. One thing about living in Kern County is all the great schools. Bakersfield Christian! Carson! Stop now! Right here! And no matter what school you go to, there's still one thing. One thing! One thing! We can all agree on. Kern Schools is the number one financial institution in all of Kern County. Take advantage of our auto rates as low as 1.99 APR with no payments up to 90 days. Kern Schools, the biggest little credit union in town. Introducing the Next Gen Home by Lennar. Your family is constantly evolving. The kids move out, the kids move back. Maybe grandma moves in. You need a home that will grow with you and your family. The Next Gen Home by Lennar has a separate private living space with a bathroom, kitchenette, and entrance all its own, but still connected to the rest of the house. It's a home within a home. New models now open in the Central Valley. To learn more, visit a Lennar Welcome Home Center near you or visit Lennar.com. Save 50 to 90% with the Bakersfield Californians Daily Deal featured on Bakersfield.com. A daily deal is offered each weekday on services from local restaurants, dry cleaners, health and beauty services, retail shops, and local activities for the entire family. The daily deal is 100% local. Find these amazing deals only at dailydeal.bakersfield.com. Through 
excellence in the classroom and strive to achieve our potential. We compete on the field with integrity, on the court with respect, and in the pool with distinction. We are strong leaders in our community and gain values from our biggest fans. We continue the legacy of commitment to our universities, to our coaches, to our teammates, and most importantly to you. We learn, we compete, we inspire. We are the Western Athletic Conference. It all comes down to this. 14 teams battle their way through the bracket for a chance to punch their ticket to the big dance. Be a part of the madness in Las Vegas, March 11th to 14th. Go all in and witness who goes home a champion at Orleans Arena. The 2015 WAC Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament. Tickets on sale now at orleansarena.com. In a fertile valley, a growing university with record enrollment and graduates serving the needs of a thriving community, a tradition of athletic excellence. Now a part of the Western Athletic Conference. CSU Bakersfield. We're back here on Roadrunner Rundown. My thanks to Javante Maynard for joining us in the last couple of segments. Uh, Javante, one of the uh, one of the good ones, and that uh, as Coach uh, Greg McCall can attest to, he's joining us in the studio now. Coach, you see it all the time. You got uh, players that are in your program for three, four years, and the worst part is they have to go. Yes, that <laughs> is tough. You know, you got these players and you've developed them, and you've, they've they've taken on your personality. At the end, at the end. <laughs> All at the end, they got to go. Yeah, and uh, that's the sad part about it. Well, uh, you've got uh, you guys. By the way, congratulations on uh, on two wins this past weekend. I think it was the first what, first conference uh, two game road trip. You managed to sweep them both, right? Yes. So yes. Important when you needed them. Handled business at uh, Chicago State, and then uh, wow, what a game Saturday! Last yeah. thirteen seconds were probably some of the craziest thirteen seconds uh, I've seen in women's basketball in a very long time. Very much so. I mean, gutsy performance by both programs. I mean, hats off to UMKC. They did. Did a really good job of making the game tough for us and uh, making it exciting for the fans. But uh, those are the type of games you don't want to have. But you know those games were, are going to come, and it's great experience to be able to have those and be able to um, come out on top with those type of wins. And um, it was exciting 13 <laughs> seconds, you know, from them hitting a the huge three to Alyssa not panicking and getting the ball out quick. We always preach about taking the ball out quick anyways. Yeah. And Erica Williams did a good job of not panicking, getting the ball out and getting it to Alyssa. And Alyssa going down coast to coast and dishing it off to Bada Bay, who whew, nervously <laughs> caught it and, and put it in for us to, to tie the game up. And then um, I quickly called the timeout right after that to get our defense set. And the, the offense that she ran was kind of, you know, we, we kind of predicted some of the things that she was able to do. And we put Erica Williams back pretty much at safety because – the way she had her post player, we knew she was going to be the one leaking out. And Brooke right. did a good job of denying and making them throw the ball over the top. And she got both hands up, and the ball just kind of bobbled and went right in Erica Williams' hands. <laughs> Another good point that Erica Williams didn't do, she didn't panic again. She right. came down. We, she had a, a good look at an open three. At the last minute, both her and Ty made eye contact, and she dumped it off to Ty for a tough, tough, tough layup yeah. uh, that went in. The, the young lady that was guarding her didn't have any idea where the ball was, and Ty got it and laid it up over but it was a tough layup. Yeah, and, and we saw some of the highlights again, but Erica Williams, you bring that up. I mean, that's a good sign of maturity on your team, though, to see obviously what Alyssa Shannon was able to do yes. uh, and not panic and go. And then Erica Williams had two really nice assists from that same area where she could shoot the should have shot the three but mm -hmm. had a better look down low. I mean, that's yep. a good sign of maturity in your team this late in the year. Yeah, we, we've been talking about that. And for Erica Williams, you know, last year around about this time of year, she started to come to life and started helping us out more. And it just seemed like she's just waiting for this time of year. Yeah. But we don't want her to wait anymore next year. So, <laughs> uh, but she's waiting to this time of year, and it's exciting basketball to watch her play. And, man, and she's, she's really getting after it defensively. She comes off the bench, and when she comes off, man, she is, like, focused and ready to go. And um, she's been playing really good basketball for us. And, you know, the, the other part of it, too, is, uh, you know, you, I'm trying to get this point across to people, but you guys had that uh, buzzer beater basically against Kansas City. The men's team does. 
There's been a lot of close games. Your, your battle with New Mexico State last weekend was a, was a, or two weekends ago, a uh, big time matchup for your team Huge. and uh, and a great win. Uh, the the WAC tournament it, on both sides, the men's and women's side, is just going to be so entertaining this year because these games are going to be they're going to be tight. And, yeah. and I think fans that that make the trip and go and watch this are going to get their money's worth and then some. Definitely, and we oh man, we can only feed off of you guys' energy. As you can tell, our home court advantage for. For us, man, it's been huge, and yeah. not because of just the way we have been playing, but just the fan support. You know, it's kind of like having that six man, and and our fans have really been doing a good job. So we want to really make you know Vegas a home court advantage for us. So please, please, please come out to the game and uh, over in Las Vegas and support us and cheer us on because it's going to be really exciting. I think we have a really good opportunity to win this whole thing, and I just not saying that just to be saying it. But last year we let one slip through our fingers, and I think this year we 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 we're the team to uh, go out there and do the, get the job done this year. And, and and you brought up the crowds, and I know the cr- your crowds for your games have been loud, uh, interact, you know, in, into it. Uh, the last two men's games, I mean, I, I, I talked to Coach Barnes about this post game, but I said, Coach, you know, this is kind of part of the reason why the decision was made to keep all the games on campus was the crowd on Saturday night. I mean, yes. loud, into it. You know, people are – I finally f- hear our fans heckling people, which I'm excited about because that happens to us all the time on the road. Exactly. So I'm glad to, And it happens in your games as well. I and mean, the fans are yelling at people and getting on the other coaches. And, I mean, we're all about sportsmanship, but we would like to have that home court we advantage. We love it. And it seems like it's helped you guys. It's year. helped us so much. And I can't say it enough. You know, our fans have just really been tremendous. Uh, we, we've uh, fed off of that for each and every home game. We're undefeated at home. We want to keep that going. We have two more home games, so we want you guys to come out. And, I mean, we've been having uh, record-breaking crowds yeah. for us for women's basketball, which has been huge. So we want to just keep making history and keep breaking more records with our fans. So the more people we have at our games, the better energy we can feed off of because that's all we talk about in, in our practices anyways is energy and effort. And so – we start with that in our practice, so we just wanted to carry over to our fans. Yeah, two more home games. Seattle, uh, 1 o'clock on Saturday. You know, Obviously, that one's a big one for you. You're trying to stay up there in the top uh, couple seeds in the standings. So mm-hmm. uh, how important is that game? And obviously, that's a good team, too. Yes, yes, they are. They're both two. Seattle's always been giving us uh, tough games as well as Utah Valley. So we these, these games are really important. This will like help us seal the second-place finish unless something happens. Um, in these next two games with New Mexico State where we can actually have an opportunity to share part of that WAG title, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, they had some close games where we thought that the, the two teams <laughs> that had them, we thought Utah Valley had them and they squeaked it out. We thought that uh, Grand Canyon for sure had them and they squeaked <laughs> it out. And it was like, man, you guys can beat them. We've shown that, you know, the yeah. formula to where you guys can beat them. They shouldn't have beat us the first time, and they did. And But – we got to kind of gave you guys the formula, so go out and just <laughs> follow our game plan. And uh, but they didn't, and, and this hats off to New Mexico State because they found ways to win. And you know, we never know what's going to happen these next two games. But we want to continue to do well to take second place, and that'll give us the highest next highest seed. And, yeah. Which we'll have to play the three games. They'll get a bye, but we'll be able to play the lower seed team. You know, and uh, and being undefeated at home, I know. Obviously, coaches always want to handle their home games, but uh, it probably never dawned on you at the beginning of the year to say, I want to be unbeaten at home, and now we've got two games left as a shot. How important would that be for you as a coach and as a program if you had a year where you didn't lose a home game? Oh, that will be great. That will be great because it's something that, you know, that it's another history-making moment. Right. You know, I don't know how much uh, if, that's, if that has ever happened at CSUB as well, far as women's basketball going undefeated at home. I think last year we lost one game at yeah. home last year. So we we want to, you know, break that record, you know, of going undefeated. That's that's huge. That's huge. That would be an, another milestone in the program and uh, something else that we're looking forward to doing. And uh, you have two games left in two weeks, so slowing down a little bit. But, uh, I mean, you're keep, keeping your team engaged and fired up and ready to go. Oh, definitely. And plus it helps us a lot, too, with – players that are kind of banged up a little bit give them opportunity yeah. to heal ty has been nursing a hamstring ankle uh whatever else that she has going on by the bay with her <laughs> knee that helps us a lot with getting her rest and um so it's just a lot of players that are kind of banged up a little bit that'll help us get uh, opportunities to rest them a little bit as well too yeah and, and and for your team i know all, all year long it's been uh one it's been you know uh, tape and glue holding everything together <laughs> yes yes it's one of those things and you know just one of those things where you kind of look back at my first year where we were just playing with seven players, and yeah. uh, but 
we you know we've passed that now we found our ways of trying to keep players healthy and so we're doing a good job with that yeah two games two weeks again saturday uh, uh one o'clock against seattle next saturday one o'clock against utah valley at the i carter center uh coach uh, good luck in those thanks for joining us again congrats on the uh wins this past weekend and uh again just want to get folks out the next couple couple weeks see you close it out strong sounds good thank you guys again and please come out and support us we look forward to having you guys out there all right sounds good head coach greg mccall csb women's basketball roadrunners at home again saturday Saturday, 1 o'clock, hosting Seattle. Next Saturday, hosting Utah Valley at the Icardo Center on a Senior Day as well at 1 p.m. Uh, check us out anytime online at GoRunners.com. You can get uh, any online edition or archive edition of the program as well. And check out the new shows right there in the front corner of the uh, of the website at the new GoRunners.com. Check it out there and uh, get our, our scores and uh, schedules, tickets, all that great stuff online at GoRunners.com as well. Thanks so much for joining us. Next week's folks, we'll talk some sand volleyball. Olivia Simcoe, our head coach, is going to join us in studio and much, much more. Thanks so much for joining us once again. This has been Roadrunner Rundown.